Welcome back. This is part two of the dynamic variable tutorial series. Today we're going to talk about the uh, other data types that you can use and provide an example of that. I can't go every, over every data type, but I will show you another example briefly. And then we're going to talk about space hierarchies, which is a super important uh, lesson to learn early on. Let's get going. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and deselect all because I forgot to do that before I started recording. And we're going to hop over here into smooth POV. And you'll see that we've got uh, last tutorial, which will be linked in the video description, by the way, if you missed it, um, last tutorial setup. So we've got, again, the, the three dynamic variable spaces, and we can move the cube between dynamic variable spaces. That is uh, the color data type, though. We're going to skip ahead on my page system here to this setup, where what I have here instead is I have two uh, dynamic variable spaces, which are cubes, again, with grabble parenters, link in the description for grabble parenter tutorial. And I can move this, in this case, a sphere between them, so when I put the sphere in the right-hand variable space, you'll see that it shrinks, uh, actually grows to 0 0.3. And when I put it in the left variable space, it shrinks to 0 0.1. The dynamic variable um, type that we're using here is float. And we're actually hooking this up to a UI system here. So uh, if I enter another number in here, for example, we could shrink it by half to be 0 0.05. You'll see that the sphere is now 0 0.05. And again, there's no logics going on here. When I grab the uh, sphere, what's happening here is the sphere, when it's being grabbed, gets parented to me temporarily. And when it's parented to me, that means that it's in my dynamic variable space, and I have a dynamic variable space value of size on me, which is 0.4, which is why the sphere is bigger when I'm holding it. If I put it back into the right data uh, dynamic variable space, you'll see it goes back to 0.3. So what that shows you there is um, that you can use other data types. I'll give you a quick look at uh, how that works on the sphere. So we're going to go ahead and inspect the sphere. And we can scroll all the way down to the bottom of the sphere here. And you'll see that we have a dynamic value variable driver of type float with the variable name set to size. And it's targeting the radius of the sphere mesh here. So if we keep this inspector open and we move the sphere, you'll see now I'm grabbing it. It's set to 0 0.4. If I put it in the left variable space, you'll see it's now 0.05. And if I go ahead and change this back up to 0.1, you'll see that the radius of the sphere is now set to 0.1. I hope that provides a good example for you using other data types. If you've got any questions about specific data types, do let me know. You can use everything, um, you know, from color to float, as I've shown, all the way up to sort of matrices and stuff like that if you want to. We're now going to go ahead and talk about data hierarchies. Uh, data hierarchies and data space hierarchies are a bit of a complicated concept to explain. I can't provide many visuals here. I kind of just have to show you in the inspector. I do have a visual aid here, which is a pen drawing of uh, my handwriting, which is terrible. I'm going to go ahead and grab a brush tool as well, so I can kind of uh, make some notes with a pen as we go. Here's just the, you know, the standard brush tool. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. So uh, the way that uh, space hierarchies work is when you create a dynamic variable component or a, a user dynamic variable uh, logics node, it tries to bind itself to a space. And it does that in a sort of hierarchical fashion. So I've got that demonstrated here, but I'm going to draw it to the, the right here and kind of do it live as well. So say we have this value and it's deeply nested in the hierarchy of the world and it's called size. Now size, when it's created, is looking for a variable space to put its value in, because that's how it works. The values are actually stored in the spaces. So it's going to go up the hierarchy and say, hey, can I store myself in space two? And because space two might have a value on it, it's like, uh, might have a dynamic variable space on it, it's like, sure, you can store me in space two. But if space two didn't have the dynamic variable space on it, it would continue up to space one and be like, hey, do you have a dynamic variable space that I can use? And it'd be like, yeah, sure. Or maybe it won't be, and it would go all the way up to the world. What I mean by the world is that each uh, world of Aeneas has a dynamic variable space at the root of it that you can use. Um, and some other objects in the world by default also have a dynamic variable space. So for example, a user has a dynamic variable space on it and your dash, that's you know the nearest dash that opens up where your inventory is, that also has a dynamic variable space on it. And you can use those. I want to show you what happens when you mess around with multiple spaces and nesting of the hierarchy here. Unfortunately, this is an inspector only example, but everything's set up in the inspector here. So just, just follow along as you, uh, you can come in this world and navigate around the spaces. So in this example here, I have hierarchies, which is just the root of this uh, lesson part of the, um, uh, the tutorial. And you'll see that it's got a dynamic variable space and that it's set up as default. There's nothing in the space name and only direct binding is not turned on. 
You can see here that if I go down into space one, it has a dynamic variable space on it, and space one actually has a value on it called value, which has a value of zero. Now space two has another dynamic variable space component on it, and underneath space two, there's another value slot which has a dynamic value variable of value, and it has a value of seven. I'm going to change this down to five, and then we'll reselect the value that is in space one, and you'll see that its value is still zero. Because what's happening here, and I'll use switch on my pen, is that this dynamic variable component is binding itself to space two, and this dynamic variable component is binding itself to space one. Additionally, this dynamic variable component, which has a value of 89, which is completely different to the other values, is binding itself to the hierarchy space. And then I have another example here, which is space three, again, no name, and it has a value of seven, and it's binding itself to space three. So I hope that shows you how um, hierarchies of spaces work and how you can kind of sort of repeat the value names, depending if they're in a different value, uh, different variable space, and they won't, they won't fight, etc. We're now going to go on to um, named variable spaces. I'm going to have to go ahead and delete some of my dry diagrams here because they're not parented. That's fine. So dynamic variable spaces can also have names. Like I talked about before, there is a space at the world root level and there is a space at the user level. And those are name spaces. Let's talk about those. I want to sort of indicate what you might use them for, first of all. So you use them for kind of sort of segregated um, examples of variables that you don't want to interfere with each other. So for example, here I have a gun, which has a gun dynamic variable space with a value that's called ammo, and you'd store the gun's ammo on there. And I have a user dynamic variable space with a name of health. And this is the syntax for um, putting a dynamic variable into a variable space. You can see here I've got user stroke health. So what happens in this case is it's going to go up and down the hierarchy, and it's going to look for uh, a dynamic variable space that has um, a user in the name. So I have an example over here to show you. So here in the space names part of the tutorial, I have a dynamic variable space, which is called lesson. And I also have the only direct binding turned on, which basically means only variables that have lesson in front of them and then a slash can bind to this variable space. And then beneath that, I have a dynamic vari value variable called uh, lesson in progress. And so what that's doing is it's binding, uh, it's binding straight to this. Because it has that lesson on the front of it, it combined to the lesson space. Beneath this, I have another slot here called in progress, and it doesn't, doesn't have the uh, lesson prefix on it. It's just in progress. And so you'll see its value is false, but the value up here, lesson in progress, is true. You also see here, I have another slot here called lesson in progress, which has the same lesson stroke in progress pattern as the top one so its value is actually true and that's because it's addressing that lesson variable space so uh that again might be a little bit uh hard to follow so do let me know if you have any questions a lot of this is kind of hard to explain without trying it out so feel free to come into neos and try it out and uh we'll uh look at it as we go Again, like I said, you want to make dynamic variable spaces named when you want to restrict what binds to them a little bit more, and you want to be prescriptive about that. So user, health, gun, ammo, world, time, game, level. Uh, I have some notes here which basically say that my uh, MMC entry, which is called LaserBeam, I'll put a video link in the description to talk about the overview of that. I'm going to do a technical overview as well, or we'll talk about some of these concepts in more detail. Uh, but in that case, I have, um, you know, back in time here to the spheres i have teams set up so you'll know that when you spawn into the mmc world you're in the uh spectator team and you can move between the uh blue and pink teams here it'll be red and blue and you'll know that when you cheat when you join a team please check out the world if you haven't when you walk through that team joining barrier you'll see that your hud changes that's the same principle that's happening here but it uses a name variable space called team it uses team stroke color and that allows you to uh, bind those variables to that team named variable space. There you go. I hope that makes sense. That's all there is for this tutorial. Let me know if any questions below and I'll get back to you. Next, we're going to talk about the components in detail. Um, and uh, that should give you sort of more uh, idea of the intricacies of using them. 
look out for that one soon. I'll speak to you later. Bye-bye.